Hey there, if we have not met before, my name is Jessica. I am the creator and owner of the Digital SLP membership site, and I also podcast over at the Speech Space, which you can find on the website or on iTunes. So today I've picked out 12 of my must-have teletherapy resources that I'm gonna share with you. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so first up we have this create a story no print, um, which is great for facilitating expressive language. And in this resource, the students get to choose different images to build their own story. So this can be a great way um, for getting students to talk. You know, sometimes you'll show them or you'll ask them to tell you something and they just fall short and they don't have the skills yet that they need. So this gives them some prompts and some choices to pull some information together. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few slides. Okay, so on this slide, it talks a little bit about how to use it. So it talks about having students um, go through the resource and maybe for the some that are a little bit higher level, they can retell the story to you. Um, maybe others might need some cues and you can write out some different um, options for them to choose from for um, sequencing. And it can also be a really fun way for social skills groups for them to practice taking turns. So maybe um, you know one student has a turn picking their story and then the other student takes a turn picking what their story is going to say um, on the next slide. So let's look at a couple slides. So here's the prompt. Once upon a time there was a, and then your student would fill in the blank. So let's say they chose Panda and who lived in a castle who liked to eat jelly beans, but didn't like to eat broccoli. And then the story goes on. Um, it's about, let's see, it looks like 21 slides. So it's not really long because you want your student to be able to remember and retell, um, but they're nice visual prompts for, and, and the verbal prompt as well, um, they're great for getting your students talking and they really, there's something about creating their own story and kind of choosing their own path that they really love. So let's go ahead and take a look at another resource. Okay, so this is one of the no prints from my Would You Rather series. I do have one of these for summer, fall, winter, and spring. Um, this is a general open-ended one and um, Let's go ahead and take a look. So this talks about some ways that you can use this resource. You can use it as an icebreaker in social skills groups. You can use this to work on language expansion. Um, you can use this to work on WH questions and you can also have your students compare and contrast. So there are a lot of different things that you can do with these. Um, so then they get to choose, would they rather rub the belly of a dog or an alligator? Would they rather eat popcorn or candy at the movies? Would they rather dance or sing? Would they rather work individually in a group? So like I said, these are um, kind of general questions, so there's no sort of theme or season associated with them, but there are other options. Um, I found that students really love answering these questions. They think it's really fun, and it's a really great way to get them talking. So let's go ahead and look at another resource. So this is part of the core word work series, and I have, um, a lot of these, I think we're up to maybe 10 now. So this is an example of one that is targeting the, word, the core word want. So here we have symbol examples in practice. So you will take a look at the symbol first and introduce that symbol. And then um, we can go on and we can practice um, the examples. So we can show some images that depict want. So I'll show you a couple of those. And then we can go to practice and then ask who wants something. So this is a nice way to kind of introduce the symbol and then show some examples and then um, go in and kind of check to see if there's been comprehension of the word. So who wants something? And then they get a reinforcer. And like I said, this is one of many of the core word resources. And let's go ahead and take a look at something else. Okay, so this one is also really great. This is a stretch a sentence activity. Um, so it's actually leveled. So let's take a look at the different levels. Okay, so there is a level one and a level two. So let's check level one. So for level one, they're going to get the prompt to what, where. So you can ask them when you're looking at the slide together, who is doing what, where. Okay, so who, um, you know, little girl and her dad, what they're cooking and where in the kitchen. 
So let's go back to home and take a look at one of the slides um, from level two. So on this one, you're just gonna get some extra prompts. So when and why are added on. And we can look at a couple more of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another resource. All right, so like the core word um, resources that we were looking at before, these vocab builders are also a series. So I have one of these almost for every season and for many holidays. So this is just an example with the Easter one. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. Okay, so here we are on the home screen. We've got learn about Easter, auditory comprehension, and expressive language. So in the learn about Easter section, you're going to show your students some images to familiarize them with some of these vocabulary words. So there are images underneath the words, and we're gonna go back to the home screen. We just checked out a few there. Let's go and do auto, auditory comprehension and check out a few there. So they would touch or click on basket. So now they're demonstrating that they've comprehended some of um, what they learned in the first section. Touch or click on Easter eggs. Um, and we'll go back home. And then for the expressive language section, it's open-ended. So I see an Easter basket. I see Easter eggs. I see candy. And then they have to fill in the blanks. All right, let's take a look at another resource. Okay, so this is the articulation screener. Um, and this includes all consonants and blends. I do have these resources um, for all the different sounds to screen if you wanna track progress and monitor progress. Um, but for this, this is gonna assess all consonants and blends. And there's actually a Google Sheet data tracker included as well. Um, so let's go ahead and scroll through this. So this is what I was talking about with the free data collection. Um, it links you to the uh, Google Sheet and then it also has a video down here that you can watch the tutorial on how to use it. And then here's the word list because sometimes, you know, with pictures it can be difficult to interpret um, sometimes what a picture represents. So if you need to, if you do come to a picture and you're not sure, then you can click on the word list and go back. And the nice thing about that is when you get to the word list, rather than having to fumble around to get back to that page that you were on, you can actually just click on it. So say you were on the bubbles page, you would just click on bubbles to get back to the bubbles page. Um, say you were on, you went to the dog page and you went to the word list, you didn't know what that was and you saw, oh, okay, dog, and then you would click on that. It would take you right back to where you were. Um, and then you go through and you assess how they're doing on each of the um, words. And like I said, in that sheet, the Google sheet that's provided, you can go right through there and take your data online if you would like, or you can record it there later just to track progress. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a peek at another resource. All right, so this is a great stuttering resource for younger students who stutter. This is a little note to the SLP that talks a little bit about how to use the resource. And then here we've got our speech helpers where they can go and click on any of these speech helpers to learn more about what they do. So say they clicked on the lungs, then they would get more information about that. Um, and then we have the Sammy snail section, which is a cute little story about a snail and how he talks. Um, and then we also have types of bumps where we can go through and have our students talk about the different types of bumps that happen with their speech. And then we've got, um, body awareness where your students can practice tensing or relaxing their muscles. Um, and then we've also got some belly, a belly breathing exercise and then a little story that is called It's Okay to Stutter. Um, so lots of different ways to work on stuttering education with this resource. Okay, so this resource is called No Print Language Lessons and it reviews parts of speech. So this is a really comprehensive resource. Uh, it's a nice way to um, teach your students certain things that you might be working on in other activities. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pages. All right, so like I mentioned, this is a really comprehensive resource. So we've got nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, interjections, and the let's, let's practice section. So um, these are all essentially little lessons with visuals. So let's take a look at the noun section. So it just defines what a noun is, and then it's gonna give some visual examples of what nouns are, and then it's gonna give some more examples in a sentence. 
and then it's going to ask your student to identify the nouns in the sentences below. So if you have an annotation feature, you can have them underline the nouns. Um, and then it has the examples there for them as well. Then they're asked to circle the nouns. Um, and again, then they get to kind of practice and um, see if they were correct or not. And then it moves on to the next section, um, which is pronouns. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of content here. There's also a let's practice section at the end, and then you're going to be identifying the different parts of speech. This is definitely a more advanced section, and it's not necessary to use this with every student, but it might be appropriate for some students. Um, for others, you might just wanna focus on one section. All right, let's go ahead and move along. Okay, so for this one, it talks about what an idiom is. You know, sometimes that can be such a difficult thing to explain to our students. So let's take a peek at that. Um, so it talks about what an idiom is, it gives an example of an idiom, talks about what a figure of speech is and what it means to be literal, um, and then it takes them to the next section here, which is to look at some examples. So they have some examples. They are very visual, um, and I find this to be really helpful because sometimes you'll have an idiom worksheet and it will just... Um, have the literal and you really want to have a visual with the figurative as well so this not only defines what it is but it also gives a memory tip um, so it gives the students a way to try to help remember what the idiom is so we'll look at another um, one or two of these here and then we'll go back to the home screen and then they have a let's practice section so after they've kind of gone through and seen all the idioms defined and talked about the memory strategies um, for example this one says kevin never followed the rules he was a bad egg so he would you would choose a bad person for that one um, and then get some feedback so um, you know like i said this is it's great because it introduces everything and then lets them practice that skill as well so let's look at the next resource. All right, so this is great because you can use it for a lot of different things. They are just very basic everyday noun cards. All right, so here we are on the home screen. It divides everything up into nice categories, um, which you don't have to you know, go um, in order. You can choose whichever category you liked, but say you were going in order, go to food and drink. Um, and then you could show your students if they're working on just basic naming, you could show your students the picture and then they would tell you what it is. Um, you could also work on describing with this resource. So you could have your students tell you, um, you know, describe, you choose some words to describe this item. Um, you could also ask them what they do with it. You could use it as an object function. What do you do with this? What do you do with that? Um, if you're going to use it in that way, then you would want to jump around from categories um, unless they really need a lot of repetition. And then, then in that case, it might be appropriate to stay within one category for a while. All right, let's move on to the next uh, resource. Okay, so these are also a really basic resource. They are no print apraxia word cards. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. All right, so on the home screen, it divides them up into CVs, VCs, CVCs, and CVCVs. So you could click on whichever one you would like to do. Um, let's go ahead and click on CVCs. And then you would just scroll through here and have your students say the word. This is also really good for progress monitoring, something to come back to every now and again to kind of measure progress overall. All right, and let's move on to the next one. All right, so this is a no print caption, this resource. Um, here are some ideas on how you can use the resource. You can use it for language expansion, um, perspective taking, fluency strategies, writing skills. So let's go ahead and look at some of the pictures. All right, so here is one of the pictures. Um, these are all really cute animal pictures and really engaging and students really enjoy trying to come up with different captions for some of their um, facial expressions. It's really a fun, a fun thing to do. Another thing is, is if you do have annotation on your teletherapy platform, then they can actually draw right on it. Right now I actually have the highlight, um, but you can actually, they could actually draw the caption on if they have um, control of the screen. If not, then you could do that. Yes, yeah, so we can choose some different things here. We can choose the text and, um, and then we could put our caption over here where they can actually write the caption and then you can change, you can play around with this um, font to make it a little bigger as well. So that's kind of a neat thing. 
All right, so let's go ahead and look at um, another resource. Okay, so the last resource we're gonna look at is a phonology resource. Um, this is really fun. It is a resource where there's a pu puzzle um, overlaying an image and then little pieces of the puzzle are pulled off as the students say they're minimal pair. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in action. Okay, so on the home screen here, they've got um, six different sets of minimal pairs. There's also a printable tracker, which is optional. You do not have to use that, but it's there for your convenience. And then let's take a look at set one. So your student would um, be presented with this puzzle and then they would click next. And then they would click this puzzle piece down in the bottom right and each time after they said their minimal pair. And each time they do that, the one piece is going to come off of the puzzle. So as they say their minimal pairs, they're getting closer and closer to figuring out what's hiding behind um, the puzzle pieces, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so I hope that you found some of those resources to be helpful, and I hope that they help to get you started off on your teletherapy journey. If you are a digital SLP member, then you already own these. They are in your membership dashboard. If you would like to learn about becoming a digital SLP member, you can head on over to the digitalslp.com forward slash digital SLP. And if you are interested in purchasing these resources on Teachers Pay Teachers, they are there as well. And you can head on over to shopthedigitalslp.com. For your convenience, I've gone ahead and dropped all of those links in the description below. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to go ahead and reach out to me directly at jessica at the digital slp .com.